Okay, this is a quick follow-up video just to make the previous video I've done much shorter for those who don't have the time for it. Um, we're talking Yale Lishies, the pros and cons of them. Should you buy them? How many should you buy and why? Um, I'm just going to quick fire off the bullet points from the other video here. So there are four available that you can buy for the Yale. That is these. Uh, that comes in five. 5B, uh, 6 and 6B. The purposes of the B is for bottom pins and top. That would be a Euro cylinder and top pins would be a rim cylinder. Same goes for the 5. Um, the other purpose of having the top and bottom is if we're picking a cylinder which has a wall against it like this, we can no longer see the chart to pick. So we would use the other tool uh, upside down in the lock and now we can use the chart to pick only the chart would be upside down but we can still use it to locate the pins and to tension the lock so having all four of these is quite essential if you're attempting to use those in the uh, in the field as part of your job you need all four um, if you're going to use these to pick a euro, uh, a euro cylinder with a thumb turn these picks will mostly only pick in the clockwise direction and um, then we would remove the tool and plug spin. If it's a thumb turn, we use a different method. Um, just the same with hand picks, we would pick the lock in a clockwise direction and then remove and rotate the plug around and pick up the thumb turn from the other side. However, if we've used this pick to pick the lock in the clockwise direction, we've actually turned the thumb turn a little bit with it as we've turned the plug. So as we back this out to come around and try and pick up from the other side, we simply can't do it because we can't grab the thumb turn from that already rotated position. So if we persistently wanted to use this tool, we would remove the tool at this point and then try and poke a wire to rotate it back or something like that. It's just difficult, something to watch out for. Um, they are designed for Yale. So I have a lot of people asking me, why won't it fit in this lock or the positions off or it's not doing a good job of picking this Q locks, which it does a great job of by the way but other locks as well, it, you know, it's designed for Yale. Buy them expecting them for that and nothing else. It's just that they happen to pick many other locks as well because Yale shares the profile and the pin spacings quite often with all the other uh, designs. Um, we have something to talk about here in the Yale rim cylinders. Uh, this is, this belongs to this one here. Um, in pin chamber two in this particular lock, we have um, from these pins over here, the shorter pin is for that. There is a little shelf inside the plug and that stops the pin from dropping too far into the, uh, into the plug, into the warding down here. What that means is with these new picks that have the angled uh, plate on the back, it prevents us from actually getting up into that pin chamber number two. So put the pick in there. We can see here's pin chamber one, and you notice the pick is on the far side of the hole. In pin chamber two, we have this little step in there on that side. So if we move over on our chart here to number two, I cannot lift up into that chamber. Pin chamber number three, I can, and we see there it is in pin chamber three. So for this particular lock, we cannot use the Lishi to pick this lock open because it would not lift pin number two. These older style black ones, they don't have the angle on them. So we can put these in here, for example, and here we lined it on pin chamber two. We can, you see it passes the shelf in there and it will pick. So having a variety of different of these picks is a good idea if you can afford it. Um, it's, it's just, you know, more options you have, the better, the same for anything in locksmithing, really. Um, whilst you're picking these locks, really quickly, a quick tip. As you're picking through, obviously, like anything, we're looking for the binding pin. Um, once we find the binding pin, we'll press him down slowly, feel it binding, binding. We'll get a click. And then once a pin is set in its correct position, there will be about one millimeter of bounce and spring back. That means he's set correctly. We can move on to the next and find the next binding pin. Everything that is springy is not yet ready to be picked. The one that binds, we, again, we press him down till we get the click. A 
and then you should have about one millimeter of spring left if it's been set correctly. If it goes click and then it's still bound, it means you've overset that pin. You'll have to let go of the tension a little bit until it pops back up and then try to set that pin again. Once you've got all of the pins giving you that one millimeter bounce back, the lock should open. If you have a lock that has spools in it, you will get that anti-pick or false set. Once it's gone there, you will come along the pins and that little bit of the one millimeter spring back will have disappeared now for all of the pins. And you're looking for one. If you put your thumb on the bottom of the plate and squeeze together, you will see the pick start to give counter rotation. That's the one you need to work on and you can help the tension back if you want to get that clicked and then the lock should open after you've got them all set. Um, as I said, there is a longer video than this, but it's 20 minutes long. So if you want to sit and watch that, or go into these things in much more detail. Um, you can find that over on my channel, um, posted probably after this one, because it's going to take a lot longer to upload. So thanks for watching. Any questions that I haven't covered for these issues, you can ask them in the comments of the video, and I will be sure to answer them for you to the best of my knowledge. And that's it. Enjoy picking locks. Always choose the easiest method and you'll be laughing. Thank you.